uh, how to create a class and how to uh, the purpose of uh, um, self keyword, like having the self keyword in your in your um, classes, like what is self keyword? Is it okay? You know, if you come from a C plus plus background, you treat self key as a keyword. But when you're in Python, self is not a keyword; it is a parameter. So we we'll look at it and try to understand why is it a, a parameter, not a keyword, as treated in C plus plus. So everyone, welcome. Uh, if you have a question about last week's project or anything that you uh, you add, just ask before you get started. So kindly take two minutes to ask any question that you have. Okay, sure. If we don't have any question, do you have any new member here who has who is joining this as his first class? His or her first class? Please confirm. Yes. Yes, I'm also new. Uh, two of you. Like how many? Yeah, you can see there is no one. And who else is a new joiner? Me, Brian. Okay, Brian also is a new joiner. So thank you. So I don't know if you looked at the project that we had last week, but I haven't had uh, a chance to look at it yet. Maybe okay, we'll share. We had, a, we had a project last week, so I think you'll have some time to look at it. It was a password generator project that you had to implement using Python. And uh, anyone who is willing to share about the project and the assignment writing the article, maybe I can give one volunteer a chance. Okay, Emmanuel, you're listening your heart. You can just go on. Emmanuel, you had your hand raised, so I just yes. Let me let me get my code. I heard it somewhere. Here. If 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 someone else has his code, can can go through. Then I'll give my code. Uh, I didn't want to share about the the code. I just wanted you to mention the project that you had to do and the assignment that you had to do. So any volunteer? After Lorena, yeah, just go on. Okay, hi guys. Hi. So, whatever we had last week, we had a technical skills, and uh, that is a project, and as well as a technical writing test. So, to begin with the writing, we were to write about Python basics, that is Python 101, mostly covering whatever we had learned so far, and uh, it was not supposed to be less than 600 words. And uh, for the project, for the project, we were supposed to create, a, I mean, to write a random password generator. And each time the program is run, I need, sorry for the background noise. A new password was to be generated, and uh, it, was it was supposed to be eight characters long, and uh, to include uh, two uppercase letters, two lowercase letters, uh, uppercase letters from A to Z, lowercase letters from A to Z as well, and uh, two digits from zero to nine, and finally two punctuation signs, uh, such as exclamation marks. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. So, yeah, that what we covered last week. So, uh, today, uh, I wanted to share the materials where you can get the 
the resources for last week. So I have dedicated the last week resources. You can just open them so that you don't lose them when the call ends. So we have that the first one. That is the first article that we used uh, to reference as our first material. Then we had also this, um, which was the second uh, material that we used. Yeah. So today we are moving to new different materials that we'll be using, and we'll be learning about um, stack and queue data structures, the two highest data structures that we have. We'll also look at self and creating classes in Python. So just give me a minute. Yeah, everything settled. So we can just get started and uh, understand data structures. So uh, before we do this, uh, we talked about data structures briefly last week. And I said, whenever you want to create, uh, maybe let's say your application as a search bar or a search functionality in your, in your project, uh, like which data structure would you use for that case? Anyone who is willing to try, give a try, just make it very brief. Uh, we have volunteer. Tito, you can try. Hello, thank you very much. I, I think for, for such, but we can use a list. A list. Uh, which type of, that is uh, inbuilt. So I talked about one specific data structure that works very well just for that case. So which data structure do you think is this? Which will work best for that case? For such bars. Yeah. Mm, uh, probably, I think I'm stuck. Not uh, so sure then. Probably like, I'm not so sure. No, you don't have to be sorry. You'll try. Uh, who remembers the specific data structure that I gave for that case? Hey. Can you at least go through the resource? You'll see it is there. I indicated very well. We have indicated that data structures helps us to make some operation very hard and some operations very. So we have two types of data structures. So data structures sometimes they might help us to make the an operation uh, very hard. Let us assume we want to. Maybe it's uh you want to hide the password or to see far any text that you have. If you want to encrypt any text that you have, you have to make the operation very hard such that if it was a password, maybe a third party user can't look at it, can't know what it is. So uh, for that case, we have to pick a particular data structure. There is a situation where we want to make an operation very easy. For example, imagine you want to get a search bar so a search bar, you have to make the uh, operation as easy as you can. And I sent graph data structures, which are user-defined data structures, plays a very key load there. They are the best for such cases. Hope now you can remember that. Uh, and you have your hand raised, Tito, so yeah. You have your hard rest, so you can lower it so that you don't get uh, distracted. Oh, thank you. So let's get started and look what data structure is. Uh, what do we really uh, mean when you're talking about data structures? But I think we did this. So I think everyone has a basic understanding, apart from the two joiners. Uh, in uh, Brian and Norman, uh, I hope everyone else has a basic understanding what a data structure is and the usefulness of data structures in programming. So if you ask, if you attend an interview and you ask, maybe I have uh, this data, uh, I have this uh, functionality in my application I want to implement. Let us assume someone is asking, I have a search bar or a search functionality in my application and I want to implement. Then they will ask you, which data structure do you think best uh, suitable for this? For the other time you apply for a job and you're given a task to do, 
a certain project, most of these times they want to test your skills. They want to know if you know the best tools to use. Like having uh, understanding the best tool to use or the best data structure, the best operation to use as, at a specific time is a very key law. And that is the basic test that they are trying to do there. So uh, I hope whenever you're applying for an interview, please be sure that you check all, you try to investigate and see uh, which, uh, which, what was the purpose of this maybe project that they have given me to implement. They might give you an application maybe to make transactions and they want to understand, do you really understand everything that goes on? Uh, before I go on, I want to mention the structure of tomorrow, uh, next week's, uh, Today, we are doing data structures. Next week, we uh, on Friday, we'll have another one, which will be advanced data structures and introduction to Flask. We'll use Flask and MySQL for that case. Then next week on Friday, we'll add a fast API. Then from there, we'll move to the part of implementing a Python for data science. Uh, in between, like on Friday, we'll have a startup and we'll look at the top 50 interview questions that you'll get in Python. Some will behold our uh, our scope, like we have not added some, but I'll, I'll be getting you. Like 50 questions will help you to get started. So thank you and try to get started. So I'll start by sharing uh, about data structures, then we'll move to looking at the self keyword, uh, the, the self. Okay, sometimes I make this error. And I will repeat, when you're talking about self in Python, in Python, it's a parameter. But when you're talking about self in C++, we are talking about, uh, in that case, or in that situation, it is, a, it is a keyword. So just be keen how you mention it. Sometimes it, it is there to test you. So that is one of the things that we'll be looking at. Then we'll move to the next part. The next part is about data structures stack and you see stack and try to look where we can apply stack and IQ and try to look uh, where we can apply IQ. And also in today's article, I think it is introduction to data structures. It is here. Uh, I think everyone has the link. Uh, I hope there is no one who has joined to it. Uh, for that purpose, I'll just be setting this for you. So do you have a question before you? Any question that I should add before I get started? Hey. Anyone with something that they want to share about or look about before you get started? Yeah, you're listening your heart ask your question. Great. Hello. Hi. Oh yes, so good evening. Good now, this evening. Is, this is Brian. Uh for me I just beg your pardon uh, like um on how on what we are going to do next uh, week. I uh, was writing something like we are saying next week we are handling Frask and Myers my Space 12 and then uh, the other time first API something like that I just want to write something down okay sorry for that so on Friday we'll introduce what are frameworks we'll also look briefly about different data structures that you use when and the time complexity for different data structure but I'll be mentioning that also today then we'll introduce framework and after introducing frameworks, we will also work on Flask. After working Flask, we'll try to create maybe a logging system might take a lot of time. So we'll create a simple contact page. This contact page will be able to record the data from the contact page that the user enters and the record it in MySQL database. Also, I'll take you through a simple project that we have. It is an open source that I guide you how you can contribute. Uh, the project is about a logging system in Flask. 
that it is already made. So I'll just be getting you through the code so that you can get to know how to get started. So then on Monday, we'll handle the advanced part of uh, Flask. Then on Friday that week, we'll add uh, first API. Uh, first API is an update. It looks similar to Flask, but it is not related to Flask. It is an independent Python framework for building uh, for building APIs, REST APIs, or any other type of API like SOAP, any other API that you want to create. So first api is an independent python framework that we'll be looking at next week uh something to note about um, first api uh or why did we add it our scope add honor flask but we had to implement all we had to introduce first api first api becomes the first uh the fastest uh framework that we have right now it is past node.js it is past go imagine something that is faster than a typed language. So meaning it is very fast. So we can get started and understand it just to give you a brief understanding so that you can have at least a starting point where you can go on. So then I mentioned that this week on Saturday, we'll be having a startup uh, as usual, 3 p.m. Uh, at that time, I will require you to, maybe we'll be answering 50 Python interview questions that you, you can come across. Uh, that's all. Is your question answered? Yes, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Let me see if you have a different question. Uh, if you don't have any different question, I can get started. And remember this week's project. Uh, project is about creating a YouTube video downloader. I think you have been using some uh some uh third party softwares like the one that we call nsave nsave is there for downloading youtube videos now this time i'll be requiring you to create yours it doesn't have to have a ui but you can include the ui if you want so what you have to do you have to create this application this application when learn ask for a url when you enter the URL, it is able to download a YouTube video. Is that challenge okay for the first, uh, for the second week? Or we can add something. Ah, okay. Let's go on. Uh, Kubona, ask your question, please. Martin? Yes, good evening. Good evening. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I was okay. just inquiring about yeah. the previous project we met. Yeah. Uh, are you going to have like some code reviews and uh, see how we can improve maybe mistakes you made, something that sort, just asking. Sorry, ask your question again. Can you have? I'm asking about the previous project we met for the past week. Eh? Yeah. Are we going to have like some code reviews or like pair programming where we can maybe interact with some people's code and see their thought patterns, how they came up with the code? You're going to share everyone's code unless you don't want yours shared, just inbox me on WhatsApp. Uh, another thing will be solv solving it uh, together here. We'll use at least two approaches so that we can see the best one that works best for us. Okay, thank you. Then personally, because you left your email, you are going to send some feedback. Thank you. Uh, Emmanuel, do you have a question different from that? Because I see your heart is raised. Okay, I take that as a no. Uh, uh, so let's just start. I wanted to, to say that Just go on. Yes, I was saying that maybe if you have another project to add us on that, that's what I think. Okay, if you need an additional project, we'll do so, but that will be optional. 
it will be optional, but we can help you to review it again. Uh, okay. Hope I answered your question. So from there, I want to get started with the materials. If you have a question, this you had, then in order, ask your question. So let's get started with week two. And everyone, welcome to our week two. I hope you only have to join us. Uh, I don't uh, think we have any other joiner apart from Norman and Brian. So let's kick on uh, with introduction to data structures and algorithm with Python. Uh, I hope it won't be that advanced because he already looked at it. And please remember these things when I give you, like where have they applied? When do you use them, okay? Like the last week I was saying, I gave you the instance where we can use what? I gave you an instance where we can apply uh, uh graph data structure i also remember very well i took you uh i gave you a link to one of my implementation of a graph data structure from scratch so that was a use case where you can apply a graph data structure we have uh stack and the queues which are linear data structures and we have a uh, use case of each year like for this case, we, we are trying to look at how would you apply, uh, how and where would you apply stack? And we see like if you are building, maybe it's a word processor or like maybe a text editor, and you want to have the undo feature in your application now, the word processor or the text editor now, you can use a stack. And a uh, simple simulation of the code is here. This is uh, simply how you can add it. So you can just implement it using a stack and, it, and all the events that you have done, such that if you want to undo, you can undo, you can pop or push. So that's all about that. So uh, I think I'll move on to the next uh, application which is the application of a queue and i think application of a queue is applied uh, mostly in gaming you can use it for example in gaming but it doesn't mean you can only use it when you're developing a game queue apply in a lot of life instances so uh before we meet on friday i will ask you to go and look at two applications or where do you think you can apply Q and a stack, apart from the two examples that I have given, the gaming and the uh, word, or word editor or a uh, word processor, like the word document. So that is all I can say about that. Also will be, okay, I wanted to say something. And this is what disturbs new programmers. Like because something can be done using a specific tool, it doesn't mean you do it. Like there is a time maybe you can be in a position to implement a queue or a stack using a list. And also you can be able to implement a stack using functions. Unless it is complicated or you want it complicated, don't lash using the functions. Don't lash using the classes to implement um, queues. And don't rush using functions implementing stack unless it calls for the need to use. If you can be able to use maybe a list, if you can be able to use a lay, if you can be able to use a link list, then why don't you use it? Like use the basic data structures that we have, the inbuilt data structures whenever it's applicable. Okay, so uh, mm -hmm. so data structures, or by definition, data structures in Python are the two most fundamental concepts in computer science. And we all know you can't, okay, you can't go past interviewing uh, panel uh, without understanding data structures, unless you know someone somewhere, and which is not the best way to get into a job or a position. Another thing, remember to look at what I told you, the applicant tracking systems. Like, 
lightness means that can go past applicant tracking system. So I was talking about data structures and I said, you won't go past interviewing panel without, uh, if you don't really understand uh, data structures and algorithms. And they are indispensable tools for any programmer. So you as a programmer, you have to basically at least understand three, at least understand two data structures that we have be in a position to implement them and do maybe time complexity. Like you can analyze their time complexity. And now this is the same definition that we gave the other day. We said data structures in Python deal with the organization and the storage of data in the memory while a program is processing it. Like when do you keep your data when the program is using the, the data? We use data structures to keep the data when the program is processing it or working on it. On the other hand, we have algorithms and they refer to detailed set of instructions that help in processing of data for a specific purpose. It refers to a detailed set of instructions. These are the steps that you follow in processing of data for a specific purpose. Like, assume you add, I want to use something hand. Uh, maybe I just want to prepare maybe X. So just simple fried X. So where do you start? You start by taking your X. You, I don't know if I will call it to clash or to beat it, but you break it. After breaking it, you warm your pan. Well, now that process that you followed, that are algorithms followed for preparing your hair. Now, when you're talking about when we want to process the data or when your program or your software is using the data now, the steps that it follows to prepare that data or to process that data are called algorithms. In simple words, take uh, a situation where you have gotten the password from a user. You want to encrypt that password in such a uh, in such a way that uh, maybe an hacker can't get it. And there is a part where you want to decrypt it now. Those are the steps now you take from collecting the data from the uh, the person from the user. Then you store it somewhere. Then after that, you encrypt it. Then you can decrypt it later. So that is the process that you have to follow for that purpose. And that is the algorithm. I want to go to the basic definition here, algorithm the way you do it at campus. Like from here, go here, go here. No, just that is the basic definition that I will leave there. And I will say we measure the efficiency of an algorithm based on the four metrics. They are the four basic metrics that you should follow whenever you are measuring the efficiency of an algorithm. How well does an algorithm work? If you can see my screen here, I'll list the four metrics that we use. How efficiently can it, uh, efficiently can it assess the data? So assessing the data. Assessing the data, we'll talk about uh, searching the data. Uh, sorry searching and another thing that you can talk about here is inserting sorry inserting these are the metrics that we use when you want to measure the efficiency of a, of an algorithm and the rating these are the basic one that we have the rating something else i will leave you to is the time complexities that we have in algorithms, uh, this is uh, as a starting point, you don't have to master this at all, but you basically have to understand which works better than the other. So these are the metrics that we use. Uh, these are the metrics that we use to measure the efficiency, to measure the efficiency uh, or efficiency of an algorithm. Uh, 
what's happening okay thank you so uh let's go on sorry for that i don't know where was that from okay sorry so i'm talking about time complexity so so talking about time complexity uh we have uh six time complexity that you should do please make sure that your mic is muted please please so talking about time complexity we have zero uh oh one then we have O. I'm just naming them so that you can look at them. I didn't add, uh, I didn't want to mention them, but I'm being forced because sometimes they are very crucial and understanding them is, um, okay, so I'll, I'll list them according to their efficiency or how good they are, how good they perform. So, and so after that, we have the list three and the list three include uh, uh, n log n then after that we have the other two that is n n squared uh four square raised to power so and we have another one for uh, n uh, uh, the other one should maybe be n, uh, or it should be o. I don't remember the last one clearly, but I think it's two list for n. Uh, if you know the last one, you can tell me. But this is how they work according to their performance. These uh, the last three they they are rarely used because of their efficiency. They work poorly, but these are the best according to the order that I have listed them. So go and research more about time complexity and look about the th four metrics, six complexities that we have, six type complexities that we have in uh, algorithms, and also look at this, uh, the four metrics that we use to measure the efficiency of an algorithm. So I want to be taking a question there because this is awesome, by the way. So uh, we can just move on. They are here. Uh, it, when you look at the material that we used, sorry, I even made a typo. When you look at the material that you sent, maybe you get it. The material that has uh, self, that is explaining about self, so that at the bottom is where you get these complexities and metrics that we use. So sorry for that, and I'll just move on. Uh, moving on is to data structures organizes the source uh, organizes the storage in computer so that we can easily assess and change the data. So that is the purpose of having data structures in first place, so that you can be able at least to have all the data that you are using in an organized manner. So that uh, so that at least you can be able to use them uh, correctly or they can be used appropriately. And talking about the stacked queues, these are the earliest or the oldest data structures that we have that were ever defined in, um, in queues. And since I think we have a few guys or a few people here who are of the computer science background, I think you, really, you have come across stacked queues in your course outline. So a simple Python list can act as a queue and a stack. So this is where I was saying, if a list can work as a queue and a stack, then why are you going to implement something that is very complicated, something that you're not understanding? Yeah, later in life, when you understand maybe object-oriented programming, you can use functions, you can use any other data uh, structure, maybe function classes uh, to implement this queues and stack. But I will show you at uh event today but basically in programming we say if you can do it in a simpler way just do it don't complicate your life to be seen as the most maybe them yeah you know what i mean just don't do something to show off consider your time and to be productive and to deliver on time so you don't have to complicate your structure of your program. Um, a queue 
let me now, now differentiate between a queue and a stack. But I think everyone has taken a bus. Everyone has gone to bank. Or oh, everyone has. Maybe in your high school, you have ever queued somewhere. Exactly the way we mean, if we have in a queue, you meet, there is the first uh, person who came is the first one in the line. Maybe it's uh, in a movie. A movie theater so the first person who came is the first person in the line and it is the he or she is the first person to be served so that exactly how in programming queues work so the data that came first in in first is the first data to be solved apart from the part that in programming we have something that we call priority queues and i will give an analogy of a priority queue if you are an understanding person and you are queuing maybe in a bank and we have a pregnant woman here she is heavily pregnant she can't start in a line for maybe 20 minutes to be served so what do you do as a software developer uh, as an understanding human being you just give her the chance to be served first that is a priority queue and I will leave you to go and look at priority queue. I won't be looking at it in this part. So priority queues, they give specific data. The data is served according to the priority. The same case, whenever you are, maybe I won't give about in a matter two because I don't know how many uses it. But another thing in banking also, if you're in a queue and you have this granny, she is very old, and you see she can't start in the queue for a very long time. So you give her just that uh, chance to be served first. So exactly the way we treat queue is the same way we treat them in programming. Okay, where we are giving that pregnant woman a chance, we are giving that uh, old man or her old woman a chance to be served first. We talk about priority queue. The way the first person who entered the queue will be served first even in supermarket, you know that. The way the first person who came first will be served first. The same way we do in programming. So it follows a principle that we call first in, first out. So some you might meet in an interview, ask what is FIFO? Just to see if you understand the first in, first out principle. And they might tell you, explain to me using an analogy. You don't have to code. Because sometimes I think having to write code in the whiteboard is the old fashion of interviewing people. Uh, someone was saying it's all about trust issues. If they can see you write code, they should accept you in the, in the organization. So where do we have stack? Or where, uh, sorry, where do we have queues and where are queues implemented? So most of the instances where you meet queues is in sorting problems, okay? They are used in programming for sorting. If you have a sorting problem, maybe you might want to, to use queue. It is common for task, uh, stack and queues to be implemented with an array or a link list. So most of the times when you meet uh, stack and queues implemented now, it will use an array <coughs> or link list. So link list and arrays are basic data structures that we have. And I want you to go and research about link list and an array. Uh, understand each operation here in an array, which time complexity does assessing operation takes, which time complexity does searching operation take, which time complexity here does inserting an item takes, which time complexity here does deleting an item from an array takes and the same case for a link list which time complexity here does assessing an element takes in a link list for searching which time complexity that does searching an item from a link list take uh, which time complexity here does inserting an element in a link list takes and which time complexity does deleting an item in a link list takes. So that is an assignment I'm leaving to you. It's just for your own sake. Uh, I think everyone heard about it. So just go and research. You want to be asked to do it. I want to be asking you for the results. 
it's just for your own case. You, you know, we are look, talking about it, but maybe one year later you meet it somewhere and you start saying, I wish I did when I was told about it. So just go and do your own research. Try to work with metrics and time complexities. Uh -huh. So let's start with stack. Before I get with stack, uh, maybe I should leave us. Um, I should give a chance for anyone with a question to ask. Hey guys, can we interact? You know, any question? Anything that you want I clarify, anything that you want I say better than I am saying it right now. Yeah, someone is raising your hand. But don't ask me about the assignment. I won't give you hints. So go and ask your question. Like you have said in data structures, we use lists. Uh, also dictionaries, dictionaries used in data structures because it somehow confuses me. Yes, that's my question. Okay, uh, answering Owen, then I will answer Beja. So I will answer Owen this. You know, when we talked about data structures last week, we talked about the built-in Python data structures that we have. These are the data structures that bas are basically in Python. Okay. Then we have user-defined data structures. They serve the same case. But now you understand a dictionary, how does a dictionary play? Like, uh, I hope I won't mistake with uh, JavaScript because I'm used to two. So if you want to define a dictionary in Python, maybe you're defining a dictionary called maybe user. And this user, uh, I hope that is how you do it. Uh -huh. So it's a dictionary, you know, it's a keyword, uh, key value pair. So like we have the name of the user and after the name of the user, we have maybe it's Owen. Then we can have country, country. And after having the country here, we can specify the country here as maybe it's from uh, Nigeria or Cameroon, Nigeria, I'm not sure about that. So that basically- Can you please share your screen? Sorry, I talked for that wrong without sharing my screen. Yes. I'm so sorry about it. Yes. So, you can see it now? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. So, so this is a dictionary. And after dictionary, uh, we can have age here and we can say our own is three years old. So this is a simple dictionary that we have in Python. A dictionary, you see it's a key value pair. So and if you have to use a dictionary, then means your data that you're working with should have a key and a value pair, especially in cases of, um, when you're working with the API, I said now you have to call maybe uh, data, your data in JSON format. No, JSON format comes out in this way. Understand, yeah, I think this is the correct syntax. Let's try to print out our user so that we can see. Uh, I spent a lot of time today writing JavaScript. So yeah, you can see it's correct. This is how you implement a dictionary in, in Python. Now, imagine you want them to, co to collect this same data using a list. So you define your list. But now you know a list doesn't give us a chance to have a key value pair. So you just have Owen. After Owen, we'll have Nigeria. After having Nigeria, after having Nigeria, then we can have this age where we said it's only three years old, which is an integer. So this is uh, this is a dictionary, this is a list. Now, you see, you can't have maybe a dictionary because it is a keyword value 
Now imagine users are coming, so you can't be in a position to say this person reported this time and this. It can't be a key value pair. That is why you are saying we use lists. And lists are treated as arrays in Python. The way we have lists, uh, the way we have arrays in C++, the way we have arrays in Java, it's the same case we have, um, it's, the same, it's the same case we have um, this part. List in Python to implement an array. The same case we have maybe if you're writing JavaScript here, I will use a text uh, text uh, field. So if you have an array, maybe you could say user in JavaScript. So you might maybe define a constant user is equals to, you can have new array. So this is how you do it in JavaScript. But now in Python, arrays are implemented using this. That is the simplest way of implementing array, okay? Hoeing. Now, you understand your data before you start implementing it, okay? Understand the structure of your data. Is it a key value pair? So before you start using it, so someone else is raising his head. Uh, yeah, someone is raising his head or it was a text. Yeah, I can see when I create. Uh, hmm. Now, we, we have someone who has, uh, I kind of wanted to ask where tree comes in. So the broader classification of data structures, we have the linear data structures and non-linear data structures. When we have trees, those are non-linear data structures. When you're talking about uh, stacks and queues, those are linear data structures. When you're talking about graphs, that is a non-linear data structure. When you're talking about stack, uh, I'm repeating that is a linear data structure. So you are, they are classified uh, on they are classified on nonlinear data structure. I hope I have answered your question, uh, Benjamin. No other uh, question in the chat. Uh, hello. Yeah. So uh, I was wondering why do I need to use a queue uh, for sorting when we have the sorted function in, in, in Python? I'm at the sorted function, or is that an example of a key? Okay. You you said. We have the sorted method, Sidio. Yeah, yeah. And which data does sorted function in Python works with? List, yes. We have? I guess what's with list? Like I, I can have my list or with uh, with with uh, with new value for the uh, uh, integer, then I can just say sorted my list and it can sort my, my list. Yeah, but it understand the sort for also, it can sort a tuples, okay? Uh, but, nice. but not every time. Okay, do you understand? It's yeah. not every time that your data will come in as, as a list or a tuple. So that is the instances where you start using another data structure where you start figuring out which other data structure can play well there. Uh, any other question? Are you satisfied with the answer? Yeah, yeah I guess I am. I'm to catch up because I'm um, still learn about the queues and stuff. The first time, so. Yeah. so just what I wanted you understand, like sort doesn't work with the, every data structure that we have, it is in built. It doesn't work. The way we can't use map everywhere, the map function, we can't use anywhere. There is some way it can help us to match data. Like, especially if you're working the data science part, and now you're given, maybe let's talk about the case of Ebora. Ebora was in West Africa, different countries. If I mention your country, please don't be mad at me. But let's talk about Nigeria maybe, and there is another country that was affected by Ebora, but I'll give Ghana. So imagine you're given the data set about the Ebola cases in Ghana and the Ebola cases in Nigeria, and you have to match the two data sets so that you can have one big CSV file. So the way you can do that, you can easily implement using map. 
but there is some other cases where map won't work. So just understand the method that you want to use now, where does it work well? Where should I not use it? Can I now start queues, stacks, sorry. If there is yes. no other. Okay, thank you. So let's talk about a stack. So have you ever went to library and you made books piled up? Have you ever went to a restaurant or a kitchen and you made plates piled up? That is an example. Sorry, I did a mistake. So I have to exit. Yeah. So um, I was talking. I was asking a question. Have you ever went to a, a library and you made books piled up, or you went to a kitchen or a restaurant and you saw plates piled up, or maybe you bought a ream of paper, four cups. When you remove them from the cover, you press them down. They are stuck in a certain order, and this order is what we call a stack. So it's a, a stack of things. So the same way we have it that way is the same way we'll talk about it that way. So imagine maybe it's in dino, a dining hall, high school, where you had to queue to get your plates, then get your meal, maybe it's supper. So when you went to the queue, maybe you want to pick your plate then be served. How does it go? Do you go and when you reach to where we have a stack of plate, you start removing the most bottom plate so that you can be served or you use the uppermost uh, plate. If you are a normal past human being, you'll pick the plate that is above other plates. So that is how a stack or that is the principle, that is the operation principle that a stack uses even in programming. So if you have a stack data structure in programming, it operates under the leaf for last in, last out operation, uh, last in, first out operation, where the plate that was pressed up last is the first plate the first person has to pick from the stack. If it's books, maybe yeah, you're interested in reading the book that is maybe number 10, but I won't give such a situation. But just understand, stack works just the same as plate. So the last print that was put in the stack last is the first print that we'll use when you want to use. So a stack is a, is a data structure that follows last in first out principle. To implement a stack, we need two operations. We only use two operations. So, so the first operation, as you can see it there, is the push. And the push is used to add an element uh, to the top of a stack. So if you have uh, maybe a table and you want to add some element, so you're pushing them. So whenever you are in your kitchen, whenever you are in your bookstore, wherever you put your books, try to talk as a programmer. So say, what I'm doing here, I'm not, add, I'm not pressing books here, I'm pushing them here. Then pop is removing. And understand to push, you push at the topmost part it adds an element to the top of a stack. So element in a stack are added at the topmost. And the same case with pop. Now, when you're taking a plate, you're popping out, just say I'm popping out some plates here. And popping also, it's removing an element from the top of a stack. So you take the plate that is at the topmost of a stack. The same case now when we come to implementing it, let's talk about the text editor. I will just share my text editor uh, for a moment. Uh, I just search it. So it is VS Code or Sublime VS Code. So I have this shared. Yeah, let me come here. So let assume, let me come here. Let assume now this is my text editor and I have written some text here, then it's like I'm stacking them. And whenever I want to remove, the element that I handed last is H, and whenever I want to remove an element, it is the first element that I'll remove. How do you remove element? By using the undo. So for me, I will use command Z uh, to undo. What, what it's doing, it's undoing. So for Windows, you can use control, 
Z for Ubuntu, you can use Control Z to Control Z to undo or to delete. Like you are undoing whatever you have done. So that means we stacked element. Like maybe I stack my first variable called name. And name is equals maybe Haron. And after talking about Haron, now I start undoing. Like I'm unstacking what I've stacked. So that is one application, real life application of a. Hello? Of a stack. Are we good? The element that I put last, like here, let's say we are talking about uh, Owen. Now, if I want to remove, I use Control Z, the undo, it removes the element that I added last. So we only have two operations Hello. in stack. The main. Hello. Hi. Hi. Ask your question. All had some input. Mm -mm. Fine, let's go on. So um, I was talking. Uh, I was talking about the two major operations that we have in Python. It stacks, and the first one I said is push. Where I said push is about adding an element. And when you're talking about stack, we stack at the topmost. Then when you're talking about pop, pop is for removing the element, okay? And we remove the element from the topmost of a stack. So we have three major operations that we can perform now. The ending, the deleting, and the traversing. Like you want to go through a list and maybe identify like you are collecting maybe cash and you want to know how many people donated over $50. Now you have to go through the list that you have contained all the donation. And after collecting the donations, storing them in a list, now you go through a list, you are traversing through all nodes of a list so that you can check how, ma how many times does $50 appear. There is adding, I've talked about adding. It adds the items in a stack and increase the size. Always when you add one element or item, you increase the size of that stack by one. The addition takes place at the topmost of the stack. I think I've said that again. Deletion, it consists of two conditions. The first, if no element is present in a stack, then under flow occurs in a stack. Okay, if you don't have an element in your stack, you can't remove anything. You can't delete anything. And in such case, we have a situation where you are talking about now under flow, trying to remove something that doesn't exist. We'll try to look at it. And the second, if a stack contains some element, then the topmost element gets removed and it reduces the stack size so we have this uh characteristic we have some characteristics of stack that we can look at insertion order of a stack is preserved the way we insert element in a stack the order is always preserved and useful for passing operations whatever you want to do maybe a string passing or data passing in python how the device will recommend you start by trying. Does a stack works best for that case? And now you have to know that deprecacy is not allowed. So let's try to do something here. And we we'll try to push and try to pop. We see the operations that you're performing. So the first thing that we can do, I won't even be using that example. Let me use this. And assume we are working with, uh, 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 I can undo, then I can implement a new file, uh, not file really, code. Uh, I can introduce a new cell here. And when I'm working with this cell, okay, that reminds me of something that I talked about. Did you look at the shortcut uh, keys of operating Jupyter Notebooks and operating uh, Google Collabs? Anyone who looked at the shortcuts? Hello, yeah, 
the one who is facing your side, you can talk. Yeah, so uh, let's give him a chance to, how many shortcut keys did you get or shortcut methods did you get? Naftali, I think he was the person who said, yeah. We are waiting to hear from you, Naftali. Hoping I'm pronouncing your name well. So, <clears throat> uh, anyone else who trying to look at the shortcuts? So this is a, let's assume this is our list. Now we collected the donation and- Hello. Hi. We are waiting for you. Yeah, and after yes, Irina, I looked at listening. some of the shortcuts of the Internet book. Yeah. Uh, which one can you give us? Or oh, let me ask you. Escape, then pressing D twice, what does it do in Jupyter Notebooks? Control, forward slash, or command, forward slash, what does it do in Jupyter Notebook? Commenting. Uh-huh, the first one that I ask, who wants to try? Escape, then you press D twice. Delete. It deletes that cell. Thank you. So, hoping you can see my screen. Please, there are over 20 productivity shortcut keys that you can use in Jupyter Notebooks. Yeah, you can see it. So, like, if I wanted to, to include a cell below this cell, there is a shortcut way of doing it. Go and look at it. It will help you to speed up your process. So talking about it here, uh -huh. so you can see we have this. Now, let us assume you wanted to add, I did. Uh, I wanted to remove this. So let's come here and try to push. Uh, we'll use our don, dot push. We're trying to push now 40. Let me try to show you the first thing we talked about. So if I push, I print, I should get an error. Jesus, what are, I'm talking about push. <laughs> then I might be making an error here. Okay, let's try to use this just for the kiss the use case then we can print it here uh, okay. mm -hmm. let's look at something here Okay, pop is working because you can see it has removed. So why is it denying me the fact that push should also work? And you print X, so push. There is an alert still, okay. Okay, it's treating it as a, okay, it's treating it as a push. So, okay, we'll solve that at the most end part of the call. Uh -huh. So talking about push, that is how you can, or pop, that is how you can implement a queue. We'll be looking at it here because it's working in my queue here. Okay, I think I implemented 
seeing a class. So you'll be discussing the class that we have here. Uh, also, you'll be trying to implement it using a Q, uh, at least so that you can see. So after that, we have the queue, but I'm not satisfied still. So I'll come here and try to Google search how to push into a list in Python. Why is it failing? Jesus. I'm sorry for that. Yeah, we use their pad. So I'll come here and end it that. It is a pad, sorry for that. I even didn't know why I did the hell. I think a, a pen or insert will work. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it is working. So let me collect that uh, just for the case of the tutorial. And Sorry, I just I wanted to maximize it and I minimized it by mistake. So sorry. Yeah, now we are talking about the appeared for pushing the element. So we can use the list inbuilt method called append, and it will help us now to and some. A more element like adding more element then pop will help us to remove the element that you want to work with uh -huh. any question about it first before i go on do you have a question about this Okay, I take that as a no. So let's go on and try to look at the output. The output is here. So we have queues. Talking about queues, queues are they will operate just the way we have queues and I mentioned about queues earlier. And talking about queues now, they use the first in first out uh, principle, and it is open from the both end. Like you see, all operations in stack were, were performed from one hand, the topmost of the stack. But when you're talking about queue, you can perform operation from either hands. Like you can perform from one hand or the other hand. So that's uh, one of the differences between stack and queues among the principle they use. Also, you can mention another principle if you ask about the differences. You can say they use different what they use. One uses first in, first out. The other one uses last in, last out. Uh, then you can mention about the operations are performed in different parts. The other one operations are performed from one end. So to implement a stack, uh, a queue, we need two operations. And the first one is in queue, and queue is adding. We also have the queue. So the queue is removing. But we have other operations that we can do in a, a queue. Talking about that, we can also uh, remember we are leaving some of the operations. These are operations. These are the two operations that will help us to implement. There is a time you want to check if it is empty. So uh, check about that. And talking about that, we have the two, the three major operations again. Addition, how additions work, deletion, how a deletion works, and also know it consists of two uh, conditions. Take instances of when your queue is empty and when your queue has some data, so it will be able to delete it. <laughs> then we are using the inbuilt Python module code queue. So in Python, when you install Python, uh, it comes with uh, uh, inbuilt, 
package or module that is called uh, Q. This helps us to easily implement uh, Q in Python. So we, uh, when it was created, there is a method that was created that is called put. The put is used to add an element, put. Okay, so how we do it, uh, we start by importing it, then we call the Q method. Then inside it, it takes one argument and this argument is the maximum size of your Q. How large do you want your Q to be? Then you use put to add values in your Q. You can use get to get or to remove an element from a Q. Uh, use cases. So uh, I'll talk about one use cases, then you move about to talking about the self keyword, bef uh, the self parameter before we move to stack and queues. So a stack, imagine you are a software engineer on a brand new, uh, working on a brand new word processor. You know, when you're working with word, there are sometimes where you need to there are sometimes when you need to undo, like you're printing some text and you meet you have done some mistakes and you have to remove all the paragraph now. You can use undo if there are few ones in that paragraph. And doing that, you are making use of a, a stack. Let's see how you do it. You are tasked with creating an undo feature, allowing a user to backtrack their actions till the beginning of the session. So what you do, you can use a stack in such case. So we can say a stack is an ideal fit for this scenario. So a stack is best fit for this feature that you are tasked to do. So we can record every action using uh, the user takes by pushing it into a stack, like appending in our list if we have our list. After doing that, uh, when the user wants to undo, an action, they will pop it from the stack. And we can quickly simulate, let's assume this is a class that you had created or a function that is called stack. Now you're calling an object instance of the stack. And after calling it now, you're storing it in a variable. So inside this variable is where you use the push method to push all actions that the user takes. Then when you want to undo, you are calling the pop method on the same object that you created of the stack class that you created. Here, I created my uh, a function called stack. And you, have, you can see a push is uh, defined and a pop is defined. So when I, what I'm talking about here is you do what? You're calling this a function After calling the function, you're making an object instance of it. Then you start calling the push method that is defined here. After calling that push, now the push is helping us to add in the stack that we created. It is helping us to add in our object that we created of the stack. After doing that now, the users realized maybe they have made some errors. They have to undo. And after that, you can keep pushing again. So that is a little case application of a stack. You can just look at it at your own time. Let's talk about queues. A queues have widespread uses, including programming as well. So think of a, uh, think of a game like Street Fighter. I don't know how many has, have played any of these games. The Super Smash Brothers is one of my favorite games. So you can just have some free time and look at it, how the player works. The players in those games can perform special moves by placing a combination of buttons. Okay, we have the FIFA guys here. You know how it works. You know how you operate the pad. Now, uh, or if you don't have, you know how you operate your keys in your laptop. After you want to uh, maybe collect something, you know how you press the combination of few key ones and you are back to this uh to reset whatever settings that you want to reset so just look at uh, a little case application of games how it works now imagine you are a software engineer working on a new fighting fighting game 
in your game every time a button is pressed an input event is fired like if a button is pressed maybe start firing your gun start shooting start kicking the ball those are events that you're talking or you are, you are want to happen every time a button is pressed so a tester noticed that if the button are pressed too quickly the game only processes the first one and the special moves won't work so you can fix that with the queue so a tester noticed that if the buttons are placed too quickly the game only processes the first one and the special moves won't work so you can fix this or you can fix that error using a queue we can enqueue like remove all the input event as they come this way it doesn't matter if the input event come with little time between them it has to be removed it has to be enqueued okay and they are all to be stored and available for processing so now after removing them now you have them somewhere where now you're using them now or they are available for processing and for that case you can use a a queue data structure so when you are processing the moves we can dequeue them a special move can be worked out like this so you see you're making an instance um, object instance of a queue that we created so let us assume we created the uh, queue using a class the way you see it here and after that now here you see we are calling in queue now here we defined the dequeue and the enqueue method the NQ for adding and the Q for removing. Like you queued, like you pressed the you pressed the button, like you're adding more element whenever the button is pressed. And now you want an operation to happen, an event to happen when the operation is queued. So they are entered in a queue and now they are removed sequentially the way they were handed in that order so that is how you could implement this and now when maybe something is you can see now you're starting to queue like if a person clicks down clicks the right button clicks b so now you start defining what you want to happen after every operation works so for more things that we can look we we'll look at this code and this code also remember to look at the materials that I shared about the previous classes that we had. Okay. Mm -hmm. Before you look at that, let me give you a simple conclusion of what I think. Start, start and choose a simple data structures that allows us to store and retrieve data sequentially. In a stack, the last item we entered is the first to come out. In a queue, the first item we entered is the first to come out so understand that difference uh actually it will be asked most of the cases where you are applying for junior devs you know sometimes they don't have to give you the most and part of the questions you have to implement simple questions like this so in python we can implement stack at the oh, 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 oh sorry in a queue the first item we entered is the first to come out and we can add items to a stack using the push operation and retrieve items using the pop operation with the queues we add items using nq and we retrieve them using the queue in python we can implement stack and the queues just by using building these data structures python also has the dq library which uh, can efficiently provide a stack and queue operations in objects. Finally, we have our stack and queue classes for the fighter control data. Uh, there are many little word uses of stack and queues. Understanding them allows us to solve many data storage problems in an ease and efficient manner. Like, I will leave this as an advice, especially if you are aspiring to be a full stack or a full stack with lint more, more into bucket. Understanding how operations and to work with data works should be one of your key, like, interests try to look at how do i get the data now the way we'll be trying to get the data from the forms 
And after getting this data from maybe forms, you have the contact form. And a pers uh, person maybe contacts or leaves a message. How will you align that data such that you have that data in a certain order? Maybe you can work with it depending on the priority or the urgency of the message that you have left. All first, the, you want to work on the first message that came is the first message that you apply or work on. So uh, about that, let's look at classes, but I think we looked at classes briefly the last week. And so far, let me give you someone a chance. Uh, I want to hear a volunteer, John. John, before I give Chris a time, John Kyoko. Uh, okay, let's work with Chris. Chris, ask your question, please. All uh, and your inputs. Uh, yes, yes, mine was more love of a concern. <laughs> So I tried to follow and understand what you are teaching. Uh, what I got is, for example, in one thing, in one first part, uh, we, we create a class, uh, which I uh, say a class back, which has the methods, some of the in it, some of the, 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 the push function, the push function in uh, what is doing, it's, it, 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 it's appending to a list. And it just uh, ask the pop function. It has the, the new function, but what the function is doing is just uh, copying and removing from the list. So I was asking, why do you want to have to struggle creating a class, creating all this function, where you can just put your code and maybe create a list and update and remove from that list? Okay. Um, okay. Jesus. Okay, thank you, thank you. So there is sometimes you have to check if a list is empty. You have to check if it's empty. So you know you can't do that with an empty with a list. Like let me keep popping out. Let me share my screen. Whenever you keep popping out in a list, you know the last time you get an error. That means if it was a server and you're getting an error, means your server should fail. You get me? Okay, you can see me. You can see my screen. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. So I will just delete this. And I keep popping out. So I will just use this, this to help me simplify. Now you can see, if I print this, it will give me the output. So my list is only left with Python. So by any case, I add another pop here. I expect, uh -huh. It has removed for me Python. So let me try to do it again. You see, to get an error, I'm trying to pop from an empty, an empty list. So if I was writing a program and I don't have the code syntax or the snippet for entering this error, it means my server will entirely fail. That is why sometimes we have, also if, even if you are saying it, sometimes you have to implement the functions. I hope the case, I hope the case has made some sense, Chris. Uh, Dirango, I can see you have a question. Uh, hello. Hi. I was asked, I was asking. Yeah. Let, let's say I'm given a data set of like a carrier service where we have users and like a single user has name, age, maybe phone for number, ID number. I will do I use dictionaries as the values of the stack or what do I choose to implement these dictionaries as value of list or double? Okay, let me understand what you said. Like you said you're given a user profile, right? And yes. this user profile contains a... Uh... Okay, I can see Contain. someone is asking a question. Let me, let me answer your question first. So okay. I'm thinking of, you have a data, 
this data you are collecting from the server, I can hear my echoes. I don't know where it's coming from. Thank you. So I'm talking about a situation where you're creating maybe a, a logging system or a sign up system, and then the data comes in different format. Like now we have the, okay, we have the user profile, the image, the country, the age, the sex, and the, okay, the gender, and the, maybe the uh, nationality. So talking about a such situation, now you see that data is preferably that data is preferably a, a dictionary. Now, when you're working in such a situation, I would recommend, mm -hmm, I, I would recommend you use a dictionary for that case. But I'm sure if you're working with such data, maybe you can have dictionaries inside a list because you can't have a list of one user. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. Oh, you, yeah, can't have, yeah. you can't have a list of one user. So unless you have dictionaries as the inputs of your list, now that you'll be communicating. But we can't have like dictionaries to implement stack. It can't work that way. Another case, it comes logically. By logically understanding that I don't need a list, I don't need to store a list of one user because that one user should use the same logging credentials every time she or he comes back to your web application or your system, maybe. Uh, thank, so, you. thank you. Thank you. And can I ask a question just to abuse you? Like what type what type of application do you want to build? Data science related or web or web application? No, actually for now I'm just thinking of doing a web application like for let's say uh, a, a a collection of collecting the my fellow learners in this program, their phone numbers, something like that. When I I get good in coding just yeah. Okay, so there you need just forms. Forms, I will leave you to go and learn from Scriba. That is HTML. You can also learn something that we call Jija templates. Uh, that is a templating language, that a templating engine for Python, only for Python. So you can learn that, then you'll be able to create forms. Then we collect this data using Flask. And after collecting this data, we'll record it into a database. So I just want a volunteer who can share what he or she thinks before we get to self. Oh, Jesus, oh, we have around 29 minutes and I'm not taking even one minute from your day. So a quick one, a volunteer. We have two joiners, so I would just ask one. Uh, Brian. Wabuli, Wabuli, Brian. Honestly, I have no idea because I'm just new to self-learning Python, so I'm here to learn a lot. Okay. Timothy, I gave you. Okay, I'll mention another one. Yes, yes, hello. Uh, how are you? I'm very fine. Can you, do you, have you understood anything, Mike? Yes, yes. What can you tell others? Please make it brief. Yeah, so far I've like understood the difference of stacks and queues. So, and so, like stacks, they're first in, first in, first out. It's applications also on queues. Then I've also modulated the measures to to check efficiency of al an algorithm, which I've learned it's basically accessing, searching, inserting, and deleting. Yeah. And, the, and their time complexities, the six of them, do you remember traced two? Yeah, we have linear and we have also logarithmic. Yeah. 
actually those are the the two best for that case uh, they are most commonly one used thank you timothy in one with an addition make it for five minutes hey we don't have anyone volunteering to say anything fine so let's talk about the self uh self um okay i've said when you try to push inside an empty list uh please make understand that it will be it will like it will fail so if you are using a server it will fail then um let me take one minute to make a request you can take a screenshot of the class and you can share it on twitter with the hashtag week two of lux uh the python bootcamp by data science east africa and relax tech academy necessarily not an issue mentioning me uh-huh that is the data science east africa twitter ado. just to uh to remind those who are in the bootcamp first week and they are feeling that they can give up uh this will help them to know that you are still on and you are still going on so that they can come back and learn with you all who wants to be the only software engineer around others we leave we leave him yeah so it's uh, it's a nice process to learn with others like peer learning is one of the things that have worked for me for me uh when is racing is hard please ask your question no I, it was it is okay yeah okay yeah uh, and we also we also uh as brian asked his question we also have a community for ladies we help empower ladies please remember to follow like share and also share with your friends about La ladies of lux it's a community geared on it to ladies uh Brian, I just ask a question, please. Uh, there was a question on the chat by uh, Rukundo Benja. The one he asked about uh, collections relations with uh, DQ and uh, yeah, something of the sort. The collection labeling in Python does it come with a queue? Is that the question that you're talking about? Yes. I don't know how to best answer that because there is changes in Python every now and then, but there is one of the best references that you can get here. So what you say, collection is a whole package that comes with Python. Sometimes you have to install it, sometimes it can be installed depending on which version of Python you're using. And collection, okay, uh, let me answer it not according to the way I'm thinking. How do collections come in relation to the queue? Like uh, Benja, uh, if you are in a position to talk, uh, I want him to clarify. Like, do you are you comparing the collection and the DQ library in Python? Just type your answer before I give the it the way I'm thinking. Okay, if he is not, not in a position to I'll share one resource. But I'll say like you can get DQ package from the collection module. So module is a big module that comes with um, with different packages. Some of these packages you can get from the tutorial that I sent you. Like Honda Dictionary is one of the library that is inside the the collection module. So uh, collection is just like a module in Python, and it has different packages that it comes with. So uh, talking about that, I can say that DQ is one of the package that we have inside the collection. But also, you're in a position to use it independently, the way you saw me using it. 
Uh, we good. Okay, if you're good, let's work with self word, like self parameter. I don't want to call it keyword. A lot of uh, people you hear them talk about self keyword, self keyword. Self keyword is in relation to C++. When you talk about self in Java, uh, in Python, sorry, you're not talking about the it's as a keyword. So uh, before I do that, I will ask a question. Do you remember if I told you I have defined my object, like I've defined my function here and that function, hoping you can see my screen, I've defined my function here, but this is just a refresher, index. And let's say this index returns and underscore templates. And it returns maybe index dot HTML of which I think when then it will fail. I'm just asking a simple question. Uh, this is the home page view function. Yeah, view function. So who remembers how to reference to this uh, comment? It is called doc string. Sometimes when you are talking about comment, you can talk ab about, or you can refer to it as motor in comments. So how do you reference this when you want to maybe get the comments that were left to you by the developer? Any volunteer? Hello? Okay. Let me do it for the purpose of time, uh, for the sake of time. So when you want to reference maybe the docs that are inside uh, inside a uh, text, so what you do, you refer to the name, index, okay, the name of the function, then dot, then, you can have doc and something like that. So because this will fail, let's return, hello, word. And try to run this, of which it might give us. Yeah, now you can see it is returning to us the text. So this is how you refer to the comment. Sometimes I might write a big program and not leave a documentation for you. So if you want to get the comment now, you keep doing it like this. The other one is Ella Hadring. I think that I didn't handle this, Ella Hadring. In Python, uh, uh, let's show for specific, yeah, such exception said Hela. So here is where you look at how, imagine you want, even if a certain part of the program fails, you still want the other part to work. So here is where you use try and accept, okay? Like any text that comes under accept, that will work, that will work, despite it being, uh, okay, let's assume this part fails. So if it fails, the part with accept should work. So look at the try and accept, like here, in Python, and this is the uh, official documentation of Ella Hadring, so I think this is the best resource that you should start if you're learning about Ella Adoring. So that is the only thing that was not in the curriculum that I thought it was very important to know, especially when you're using, when you're building applications for the server side, there is part you want it to fail. And also remember we have not covered about uh, about time and file adoring. Uh, I think I won't be sharing materials for file adoring. We'll do it on Friday. I will try to fix everything that you've not covered so that when you are getting started with the Flask and any, any, uh, anything that, any concept that you need to learn a Flask, it will be, be very easy. So the self, how do we use the self keyword? The self is used to represent an instance of a class. So it's an instance of a class with the, with this keyword, I didn't want to mention this. So I'll say with self. Okay, it's not a keyword, please. So it's like a parameter. It is treated as a parameter. You can assess yeah, with, 
with self, you can assess attributed methods of a class in Python. If you bind the attribute with a given argument, the reasons why you use self in is the Python <coughs> does not use the at syntax to refer to the attribute. The way you, do, you use the at syntax in Java to refer to an attribute, you can't be able to use it in Python. So in Python, we have methods that can, that make the instance to be passed automatically, but not received automatically. Like for this case, if now you wanted to get an, uh, to make use of this, like we want to use this instance that, that was defined, a variable that was defined inside that class. So if we define that function using self, uh, okay, if we define it using self, now we can be able to add it alongside. I don't know if there is a good implementation here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I had one here. Yeah, like self works well here. You can see how it's working. It's helping us to reference to that instance that we have right, right then now. If we have a function and this function now, you want it to reference to a universal, um, you can say a universal instance of a class. That is when you make use of self. Like for this case now, it will help us to reference to one parameter that we have. So understand that self, first of all, you have to make sure that it is more of a parameter in functions. And the user can use a different parameter name in place of it. It's not necessarily to use the self when you want to reference to that value. So although this is, uh, although it is advisable to use the self because it increases the readability of your code. Now you can be able to understand this refers to what? Mm -hmm. For example, check this. Great, like its syntax comes like this. Now, if you want to make an instance of this and use a different parameter, you'll be in a, in a safer situation of using it without breaking the code. This is to remind you about how to get this. This is to get the input that we have here, that we know. You name the class, the class name, then followed by this. Then uh, if you want to reference to a method that we have inside, we do the same way using grid. Uh, yeah. So I think uh, you understand how self work. It's an instance. If you come from a C or Java background, I think we are communicating when I say an instance. Like it helps us get a better explanation so that I can be able to give you a key explanation. So using self keyword in python by a, a specific uh you have this specific tutorial that i like using see how it appears very well here like you have this uh-huh you have this uh class here uh, i think i should enlarge for that case, and I should scroll here. So we have this class here. The class is called cut. Then initialize the the group like the group method that you can specify. Now you see what comes in is the self, and the self has other two param. Uh, it it is the self and two more parameters that we have. So it's not like a keyword. We can say it's def here. It is only used in functions. And now when you want to reference to, you can make another instance of this, such that when you use this, uh, the second, when you define the second method, you don't have to add these two parameters again. You're in a position to use them by using self. So self will help you to reference to the name and the age automatically here without adding having to define them again as parameters. So I don't know if it makes sense. 
but I can copy this and paste it in the chat box so that you can have a look at it later. And also I will share the link. I'll share the link. So that is all about the self keyword. You can try to look at it and its advantage, how it helps us to reference to parameters in different functions in a class without implicitly defining them in a method that we are working with currently. So uh, that's all about uh, self, the rest we had covered them again. So we have uh, two data structures that we covered today. I won't repeat the definitions, but you can look when you are working with stack, you can define them implicitly using functions and remember when you are using functions again, you are using this, the list, a list inside a function. So list, uh, it doesn't matter which data you use, uh, which method you use to implement. A list will play a good crucial role. Then uh, we have another way of implementing. Like I said, module, uh, like collection, uh, collection is a module in Python and it comes with different packages. One of those packages is DQ and DQ is used now to implement uh, a stack in Python. That is how you see it done here. Then in the, D, in the DQ, you can append to add values or you can DQ to remove values. You can pop, sorry you can pop to remove values in the queue. Just the way we did it. Like understand we are from collections. So collection is a module that it comes pre-installed with Python. When you install Python, you install collections. And collections as a package called DQ. This DQ, we can use it to implement a stack. And we implement an empty stack using the DQ method then we make an instance object of the DQ method from collections. And after making it, now you can append values. That is pushing a stack. Like we are adding values, control Z. Yeah, we are adding values in our stack. And after adding all values in our stack, we can start removing them. And you can see the last value that we added is code. Now, when we try to remove, and we learn this code, we are getting code as our output. Meaning the last element that was added last, the element that was added last is the element that we removed uh, first. Now, after rem removing the first one, you can see you are left with the strip. And when you pop again, you should get strip all the way until the list end. And now, as I said, when you are implementing using the collections, using the inbuilt lists, uh, that advantage is only solved here. When the list becomes empty, you get the error, meaning the server can now fail. Meaning the server can fail. It will cause an error in, in the server. I won't implement it, but I will show you when you are running Flask. You get a four or five error, internal server error. That is the error that you get in such a situation. So after that, let's move on to queues. Queues work the same, only that they use the different, uh, a different approach or principle. You can see as, uh, okay, analogy is given here of a ticket line in a movie. And now you can see here, what you're trying to do, you're trying to implement queues using we are trying to implement queues using uh, classes, Python classes. Uh, I mean some errors. Uh, what we are trying to do, we are trying to implement uh, queues using Python classes. And you can see we have the initial, the global method that we'll use. This method uh, parameter, it defines parameter of variables that we can use all over the all of our class. And talking about it in such a situation, now you, you see you define a self, a DQ, sorry, a NQ 
for adding. And now in the list that we have, you use the append to pay, to add element in your queue. And when you're using the queue, now you have to check the length. For you to add, the length should be greater than it should be greater than one. That is why as you see now we have this error to avoid removing element from a list that is empty. Now this is the element that is helping, uh, that is the condition that is helping us to check. The if condition, if the, the length of the queue is less than of the, this list is less than one then it means you return none else it will return this value like you have to remove the element that is at index zero that is what you're saying then you can display the to print the values of the queue when you call the display we'll do that so when you call the queue on queue like you're making an object instance of your of your class let me show you you, you define a class called Q. And when you're defining a variable called uh, Q here, you're making an object instance of it. Then you have NQ. What does NQ do? NQ, we have defined it very well here. We have defined it for appending in our list. And appending in our list, it is now to add an element in our list, it adds element in our list, and add element in our list. If we call display, the display is supposed to do what? The display is supposed to display the data that we have in our list. That means our queue for that case. And DQ is used to remove the element in the queue which was ended first. And now we are talking about the person who arrived first and this one. So when we dequeue, we expect to get the whole list from here to five without one. And that's what happens when we call dequeue, then call the display after removing the element. Now you can see after adding the five element, we have them here when we call the display. And after dequeuing, we are removing the first one. So when we call the display method, we should get to, to five. Uh, I think I've talked enough and that we can call it the end. And unless you have a question, you still have your five minutes. Yeah, someone is raising a sad ask question, please. Hello, hello. Uh, um, I have a question. Eh? Yeah. About functions. Yeah. Is there a difference? Is there any difference between argument and parameters? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm looking for someone to call by name to help you. That then I will define. Who wants to volunteer to explain between functions and para parameters? I can help. Yeah, uh, two more them. So, so for. For parameters, parameters are normally the values which are in the parentheses once you're declaring a function. While arguments are now the like the actual values once like you're calling the function. Thank you, Timothy. Uh I'm talking to Tito, hoping you can see my screen. So let us assume we want to define a function to multiply, maybe to calculate the power. I hope I'm not on mute. So talking about that function, maybe you want it to square, so you can call it SQ. Hey, that there is a Q and code, so, so we can call it uh, square. Then after doing it now like that, now you can see we have this. So here we can have X, then, there is a time now you return, let me return. I want to return x by x. And now I have to print, I'm calling my sq. And after calling sq, I want to pass 10. So I'm expecting it to take my 10 and the square. So let's see first of all, if I'm talking the light thing. So I have this typo. You can see it as squared. So 
x for this case is the parameter where 10 is the argument. The value you use in parentheses when defining your function are called parameters and the value you use when you're calling the function or when, or when you're invoking the functions are called arguments. Thank you, thank you. Next question. You still have your two minutes. Okay, then we can end the call there. Please feel free to share with your friends about Raxia. Yeah. Someone is using his hand or her hand. Waburi, Waburi, ask your question, please. Uh, at the beginning, you said uh, someone can reach out to you on, on WhatsApp, or I don't know if there's a WhatsApp group. I'm, I'm new, so I'd like to be able to connect with people. And also we have the, the meetups, or rather the meetings uh, sent to me instead of on, through Twitter. So I don't know if there's a provision for that or an email or something. Okay, we have two uh, platforms that you can use. You can either join join other uh, 470 members, learners in Slack, or you can join our WhatsApp group. When you text me on Twitter, I will respond very fast. Mm -hmm. I think that is the best part. But when you text um, on WhatsApp, it might take some time, but also I uh, will give you. I think you texted on Twitter. So when you text me on Twitter, I will give you my number and I will, uh, maybe you can text me and I will add you in the WhatsApp group and give you an invitation to the Slack channel. But the Slack channel is widely open, so you can get it from join. Let me share the link here. This is the Slack channel. So if you use that link, you'll get an invite to the Slack channel. Uh, so text me on Twitter, text me on the Slack channel, and I'll give uh, any intern to start uh, assignment. You can start right now. I won't be giving you any int. The last one I gave you import random. I don't know if how many people used the random. So this week, start researching by Friday, you said your assignment, no excuses. Um, if you don't have a question, you can leave. You don't want to steal your time, so the recording can stop or so. Thank you for your day. And thank you. Please feel free to share.